Hello, everybody. Ella J here for a wrestling gal here with a familiar face to break down our TNA wrestling bound for glory predictions. It's kind of a tradition at this point, um, which we'll explain in a minute. But I am joined by the queen of the convention scene and a now newly part time top golfer, Kimmy Sokol. How are you? I'm great. You know, again, I beat Sean. I beat so many people at Top Golf, but we're not here to talk about Top Golf, as you told me two minutes ago yes. that we really couldn't mention it. Yes, we are here to break down TNA Bound for Glory predictions. It's kind of a tradition at this point. Um, we did we did unofficial predictions. We didn't do them together, I think, in 2022, but we were comparing notes. We were there in Albany at 2022. We were comparing notes. You were, what, one in seven or one in eight? One in one something. One in seven. Yes. One in seven. And then, so because of that, we kind of birthed this tradition. Last year, you did a little bit better. I think we did tradition. Uh, we did predictions with our good friend Jose Gonzalez last year. You did a lot better there. So we're going to see what your third year looks like now. Um undefeated as... <laughs> eight and oh duh there's nine matches on this card as of now no. there there, well, there could be some I announced i wasn't counting the zero hour because you know that uh. 20 person call your shot i don't really count that in predictions because you know that could screw up my whole my whole game here that's i have true. a winner though but it could screw me that's up true so. but this year tna bound for glory is actually going to be on my birthday so i don't even know i don't think i'm gonna be able to what watch a, this live unfortunately but it's a great birthday present to you because it's it is. the biggest tna show of the year we have the tna hall of fame kicking us off yes on the pre-show and that battle royal that's probably gonna screw me over yeah so i think as of now i don't think we have any people confirmed we'll we'll, we'll start there as like you said, there's nine matches on the card. One of them is going to be on the countdown to Bound for Glory. That being the 20 person intergender call your shot gauntlet where the winner receives a trophy and they also get a title shot, kind of similar to Money in the Bank that they can invoke at any time um, within one year. So last year we had the first ever female winner, Jordan Grace. She defeated, obviously, uh, I believe it was Bully Ray. Uh, you know, it starts as a battle royal. At the final, I think it's the final four then then compete in like a an elimination style match and then last year came down to jordan and bully and then jordan pinned bully if i'm recalling this correctly i think is the way it goes we don't have anybody confirmed at the time of recording this but there could be some surprises especially considering tna is still working with wwe um which you kind of alluded to in talking to me before this so who is your winner pick? Again, there's a wide field. We don't even know who's really competing. There's going to be surprises for sure. Um, and I'm assuming one of those surprises could be your winner pick. So if it is not... So I agree with you. NXT is going to show out in this match. This is the match that you are going to want that shock factor for. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not really sure of buying the pay-per-view and you see all these NXT names in this Call Your Shot Battle Royal, you're like, oh my god, who from NXT could show up on the main card? But I was thinking about TNA booking. I wasn't thinking of my winner. So, in our main event, we have this special guest referee in Frankie Kazarian, who has not been announced for any match on this show. Mm -hmm. So, I think in pure TNA fashion, they'll, they might have Kazarian win to then be like, oh my god, is he going to cash in in the middle of the match and try to get the win and like try to screw Hendry? Because, you know, you could have that, that where Hendry wins and beats Nemeth and then Kazarian walks out bound for glory. That, I believe, when we were there, it almost had where Bully Ray almost cashed in when we were there yes. bound for glory two years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm going with Frankie Kazarian because mm. TNA booking. Who do you think could show up from NXT in this? I mean, we've seen Sol Ruka. She was just teaming with Jordan Grace and Masha Slamovich. Um, obviously, we've seen Wes Lee in there, although now he's separated himself. Um, obviously, we've seen Wendy Chu there. Um, She's on a match on the card. She's in yeah. the Knockouts Tag Title match. Yes. I think Javon Evans would be an interesting name to see here. He's very young. I feel like, you know, he's doing a lot of cool things in NXT, and I think he would make a really big impact in this match. So I'm going to go with Javon Evans as someone from NXT I'd like to see. With it being, um, now granted, this is the day before NXT Halloween Havoc, so we we could see, you know, some of them. Um, it is spooky season, so I would love to see Tatum Paxley back, I think. 
Um, but then again, you already have Rosemary and, and Wendy Chu, you know, they're fi- fulfilling the, I don't want to say spooky season quota, but you already got the spooky vibes from them. Um, so Ruka, I think would be, a f- I would definitely think, cause she's been on TV a lot lately. Um, as for the winner there, like, there are so many possibilities. It could be like a Zachary Wentz, you know, he won the X division championship and then quickly lost it. Um, there could people come be people competing twice on this show, um, in the call your shot and also later on in the show. Um, I don't, I feel like you would want an NXT person to win this, you know, as I'm looking at this too, um, I don't think Eric Young is on this card. Um, no, he is not. So I think, especially with him coming back, what, last year, you know, he's been back for a hot minute. I think he's not on this card. I think Eric Young would be a solid person to win this. You know, he's kind of a TNA, you know, he's been in and out in waves, but I think he's a he's been a consistent of TNA throughout the years, and I think he could easily get back into the world title picture. Um so I would love to see Eric Young or I think a, like a, a soul, like a woman winning two years in a row would be great. Um, Rhino's getting inducted. I think he's still wrestling though. So he could also potentially, he could enter and win. Um, oh my God. It's I, like those memes where you're mm-hmm. like, I have a wrestling match at 630, but I'm getting inducted yes. the same at seven. <laughs> yeah. um, I th- also think it should be around the time that Kylan King is maybe cleared. She got, she tore her ACL in December of last year. So it's been 10, 11 months since she had surgery and got injured. So uh, this could be the, the way that Kylan King comes back into TNA. Um, but I think, I think Eric Young, I think is a solid choice from me of somebody who who's a big name but also is not wrestling on this card um so are we both going with like a solid pick and then like nxt uh, someone from nxt and also this i think so because it's a real possibility that like an nxt person could win this i agree with you (sighs) Who, who uh, would it be from NXT, though? That's like, also, I'm trying to think, like, do you have somebody who's wrestling in Halloween Havoc? Or do you have somebody who's not wrestling on Halloween Havoc? Well, the thing is, too, so this pay-per-view is in Detroit. Yeah. And Halloween Havoc is in Pennsylvania. Yeah. But it that's a quick flight. I think it's only, like, an hour and a half to two-hour mm-hmm. flight that you could fly morning of. But then, like, the TV tapings, oh, too. Oh, TV like, tapings. They, oh, that is very on, true. So you want somebody on- who's not booked for Halloween Havoc, yes. probably. So that would be, like, a Javon Evans, then. I could see that. Jav- I think Javon is a solid pick uh, for NXT people. I would love to see a woman win two years in a row. Um, but I-, I-, I just don't know if they're going to go that route again. Um, I think Solruka would be a natural fit to be in this match, though. But I think I think that other girl Brinley, she's been Brindley there too. Reese, yeah, I think she's another one who I could see. We could also have Ariana Grace, Santina Morella's. I don't. I mean, what if they, they want... both go in the match and they like work <laughs> I, together? I, no, I want her to eliminate. I feel like they have to have Ariana and Santino, or at least Ariana, and then Santino tries to help her. Um, if they are in there together, I think she eliminates him, which would make for a fun moment. She could also win, um, potentially. I think that would be super fun. That'd um, be fun. I think I'm going to go with Eric Young, though. But if we're thinking maybe a uh, NXT person, I think Javon Evans is a solid pick as well. Now, He's piggybacking off of me. You yeah. heard that, everybody. <laughs> No, I, I want to get, well, I mean, since you mentioned it, you because you brought up Frankie Kazarian, obviously, you know, he will be the special guest referee in what we assume is the main event of TNA Bound for Glory. Nick Nemeth, my guy, will be defending the TNA World Championship against Joe Hendry. Man, I feel, man, and I love, I love my Nick Nemeth, but I think, you know, Joe lost the NXT championship. If you really want to keep him, it's like, it's kind of like an LA Knight situation where they're so hot, they're so hot, they lose a title shot, but again, they and then they have another big shot, and it's kind of like, if they lose, then I think the people are going to be like, 
why aren't you pushing him? Well, why are we still supporting him? I think you have to strap the rocket to Joe Hendry. Obviously, you didn't do it in NXT, which I get, you know, territorial lines get blurry sometimes, but this is his home. We're in TNA. And if there's any time to strap a rocket onto Joe Hendry, it's now, because if not, I feel like you risk the people turning on him because he wins and he's great, but he loses when it matters the most, you know? Um, and I don't want that for him. So as much as it pains me, um, I think now is the time to strap the rocket on to Joe Hendry. But then again, you have that Frankie Kazarian factor and you could realistically have Frankie continue to be a thorn in the side of Joe Hendry and cost him just like he costed him in the battle Royal. The first time we saw Joe on NXT. Um, so you could reasonably have Joe lose because of Frankie Kazarian. Um, but I think you don't want to ruin Joe's momentum. Now is the time to strap the rocket to him and meaning give him the TNA world championship as much as it pains me. To it's say okay. Personally. It's okay. I, I assure you it's going to be okay. okay. My favorites never win. <laughs> They're like my boat. I agree with you. This is a must win for Joe Hendry. We saw him lose the title match at Slammiversary and that like multi-man match where mm -hmm. Hendry and Nemeth were the final two where everyone thought Hendry was going to walk out of Slammiversary with the title. I didn't. I picked Nick Nemeth. Of course you did. <laughs> but a lot of people aren't were like, why didn't Joe win? Why didn't Joe win? Like, this is a must win because I feel like Joe is in that same boat as like Speedball Mike Bailey where like they yeah. get these huge opportunities they can never win the mm -hmm. big one. Now, we don't really know what his contract situation is looking like. I believe it's up at the end of this year. But, you know, they we still have Turning Point, which I believe you and I will actually both be at Turning Point because it's taking place at WrestleCade Weekend yes. in North Carolina. So there's still shows where you could have Hendry lose if his contract's up in January of 2025. But Hendry needs to win. If he doesn't win, he better be, like, in somebody's ear begging him to get out of his contract to go to NXT as soon as possible. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations where I mean we'll talk about it we'll might as well talk about her now. Um another person that a lot of people think whose contract is also coming up is Jordan Grace. Um that a lot of people think um WWE unintentionally used this kind of a a farming system to get more talent onto their roster. Um and Jordan might also be looking to leave. We don't know yet, but her contract is up. Um, also, I, th I think also January of 2025. Um, so that that's three months away. Um, I'm guessing her contract is up be probably at the beginning of January or maybe at least through Hard to Kill. Um, and similarly, she could also, because she's been on WWE NXT programming a few times now, um, and also she's been working with, like 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 I said, Sol Ruka just teamed with her and Masha. Um, and so I also think, not only because of that, um, Kind of the opposite of Joe Hendry, though, in this case. I think if Jordan is going to be maybe on her way to NXT, now might be the time to take the title off of her. And also, it gives Masha Slamovich her opponent. So Jordan will be to be defending the Knockouts Championship against Masha Slamovich. This is the match we saw for the first time two years ago, and I was thoroughly convinced that Masha was winning there. It was a banger of a match, but I was honestly, I'm not speechless a lot in wrestling. I was genuinely speechless after that match. One, because it was so good, but two, in my mind, I was convinced Masha was winning. Obviously, she didn't. She lost, and she lost to Jordan again, I think, a month or two after that. So Masha has yet to defeat Jordan Grace. Now is the time, though. She get she gets another opportunity two years later. Masha has been a consistent player in the knockouts division for what three years now. She ha she's had t tag team gold. She has not yet had singles gold. I think if there's anybody who can end Jordan's phenomenal reign, it is Masha Slamovich. And I think Jordan again, assuming she's if she's on her way out in the next couple of months, I think if there's anybody she would want to put over, it would be Masha Slamovich. And it also gets Masha retribution for the last two years. But that's just my line of thinking. Kimmy, what are you thinking for this Knockouts Championship? You're literally taking my notes here. <laughs> like That's literally, literally what... In, that's literally what mm -hmm. I said. Um, but Grace's contract also coming to an end. Perfect place for her to lose on the biggest show of TNA's calendar yeah. year. Slamovich is ready to win her first knockout championship, like you said, has been dominant in TNA for the past couple of years. 
And this will give, you know, Grace is ending feud before she hops over to WWE is just feuding with Slamovich until 2025. Like you said, we don't know when in January it's up, but we're assuming it's after Hard to Kill, if not maybe right before. But yeah, Masha, this is another one. Masha has to win here. Again, if if it's not Masha, who's the one to defeat Jordan? It's not like they're building anyone else up. The only other person, again, I think could be a returning Kylan King. That's the that's that's the only because again, Kyla Kylan's kind of a hybrid of strength, but she also has that agility and speed that she can pull out. She is the only other person because I don't think they might have faced off once, but it was never for the knockouts championship. I don't think Jordan or I, I could be wrong, but Kylan was more so involved in the tag team division before her and you know before she got injured and then her and taylor split up so she's the only other person i could think but we also don't know when she's going to be cleared to come back it could be here at, at bound for glory um but she's the only other person i could think could beat but also like like a joe henry this is a kind of a must win for masha because jordan is like the last person the only person that she really hasn't defeated at all in tna she's gone through everybody else except for jordan and i feel like <clears throat> Again, Masha's Masha should be the person to beat Jordan. If it's not Masha, like I said, the only other person I could see would be Kylan, but I don't even know when she's going to be cleared. <laughs> Soon. Coming yeah. to a TNA I right mean, near you. <laughs> we think. Okay, so, so far... Uh, we're, we're in agreement. So far, yes. Um, I'm going to let you pick what match you want to cover next. So I think... I think we're going to get a title change in this one because I'm going to go with the Knockouts World Tag Team titles because I think mm -hmm. Wendy Chu and Rosemary are going to win <clears throat> because, first of all, these titles are the most hot potato championship in all of wrestling, and it's so sad because it's like someone wins, then someone either gets hurt, the tag team breaks up. I don't know why, but they're always hot potatoing. However, I think Chu and Rosemary should and win because this gives exposure to like the TNA Knockouts World Tag Team titles on NXT since Wendy is signed to NXT. I think, you know, if maybe they're not being used on the TNA tapings, maybe they could be on like the pre-show for Halloween Havoc. I think that'd be really cool because we saw the X Division champion shine on the last NXT pay-per-view. So why not try to do that again? So I think I think that Wendy Chu and Rosemary are going to win. I think that Spitfire, they're no match for... It's spooky season, you know? We're we're, we're using Abaddon on AEW programming. We got to keep with the theme here of using spooky characters in wrestling. So I think Wendy Chu and Rosemary are going to win. I can see that, but because... I mean, they could just continue this trend of hot potato, but I just... I don't want that because they've only held the titles just over a month. It'll be like a month and a half by the time of Bound for Glory. They won them at they won them back at Victory Road um on September 13th. And I think it's granted it's it's a knockouts tag titles that keeps getting hot potatoing. They could they could continue the trend. For me personally though, that'll be what like 40 43 days like that's it and before their first reign i think was only 56 days so like i don't i don't want the hot potato trend to continue i want them to get a lengthy reign but i can absolutely see the benefit from having rosemary and wendy chu winning because again you get the first really nxt person to hold tna gold or tna person to hold nxt gold wendy chu would be the first to do that i feel like they could benefit because it's giving more spotlight to the women's tag teams um which nxt definitely has a lot of um so they could bounce between could float between shows but oh man, I I just think it's too soon. But also, it's knockouts tag titles. It could be. I I want to be wrong. I really, I want to be wrong. Um, but I think it's too soon for Jody Threat and Danny Luna to lose them. So I'm gonna go with Spitfire for this one. But the synergy. Just think of the I synergy. Know. But we've but but so far that's already three title changes that we're talking about. And because I think we're going to be getting another title change later in the show, um, I don't do think, I. I don't think, I don't, because it's, I think we're going to be, we're going to talk about this. I, I think the other title change, um, I have Spitfire retaining, but I think the other title change 
and rightfully so, is the TNA World Tag Team Championships. Yes, I think um, we're in. A, I believe yes. we're going to pick the same people yes. who the final people I'm working with for the year at House yes. of Glory. I think so. Maybe the Hardys. Um, yes. So yeah. the system will be system meaning Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards will be defending the TNA World Tag Team Championships in a full metal mayhem match, which is. Basically, T TLC, just called Full Metal Mayhem, which I get. So it's TLC styled. They will be defending against Matt and Jeff Hardy and ABC, a.k.a. Ace Austin and Chris Bay. Chris Bay and Ace Austin, I think, are already at least two-time tag team champions. Um, the system regained them recently. Um, the Hardy boys are back in TNA. They have not held um, tag team gold in, in a while, actually, like in any of the major. I think the last time was WWE, which would have been, what, 2017? So it's been a while since they've held a, a major uh, tag team titles together. Um and also, like, TLC-style matches are kind of in their wheelhouse. It's what you think of when you think of the Hardys. You think of the high-flying carnage. You think of the TLC classics from the early 2000s against Edge and Christian and uh, the Dudley Boys. I think this is in their wheelhouse. And, like, also, I, I because the system has been falling apart, you know, Moose lost the TNA World Championship. Now I think it's time for Brian. And then Alicia obviously lost uh, the Nakas Championships with with uh, Masha Slamovich. Now I think it's time that Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards complete that and the system loses all their gold. Hardy boys rise. I agree. Since this is the biggest show of the year, it makes most sense that one of the biggest signings of 2024 the hardy boys rejoined that this would be the show where they win them mm -hmm. i will say if alicia is cleared by then she will be going through a table to oh, this match at some point but yeah hardys have to win this one it makes the most sense they'll go on in 2025 feud with every single team until there's a young team coming up that the hardys are going to want to put over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i want to talk about a non-title match um, oh my god. Both, both men are both former TNA World. They are both former TNA World champions, though. I'm talking about Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin. Um, it would be a great time, great time for Steve Macklin to get into the hunt. But man, Josh Alexander has been on a run since turning heel, my friend. <sighs> Poor Steve Macklin. Ever since he announced he re-signed with TNA earlier this year, they have no idea mm -hmm. what to do with him. He is just continuously lost in the shuffle. He should have went with his wife to the other company because then he could have he could have vibed. They could have traveled. Every, I mean, they still do travel almost every week anyway. Yeah. But you know, they could they could have love. We we love this for them. Um, this match should be good, but Josh is not losing on the biggest show of the year, so Josh is gonna win. I mean, Josh did did lose on the biggest show of the year in, what, 2021 when Moose won the Call Your Shot and then cashed in on the same night? I That's think that was he... 2021. But... Yeah. He needs his retribution. I mean, he got it. He got it because he defeated, he defeated Moose to, to win the title, you know, eventually. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I think because Josh Alex, again, this is still kind of new territory because he what? He turned heel at Slammiversary, right? During that uh, multi-man, I think it was, the gauntlet match. Or not gauntlet match. It was an eliminator match. Um, and so I think he's still in the early stages of this. He hasn't held the title in a hot minute now, and I think he's going to continue this hot heel streak. But also, like, I want Steve to get back into things, get himself back on track. But like you said, it is the biggest show of the year. I think Josh can attract even more heat. Um, again, this is also, this match doesn't also have a stipulation. Um, it's one of the few matches that doesn't, it's just a straight up, one of the two matches that are just straight up singles matches. Um, no titles on the line, no extra stipulations. Um, Josh, I guess, also could get himself disqualified, I guess, and still be okay if he's going to continue to beat down Steve Macklin. Um, I would think, though, that Steve probably has Eric Young in his corner, um, at least. Um, so maybe we see Eric Young come to the rescue. We don't know yet. Um so we'll see what happens. Um, but I also have Josh Alexander winning. When is um, his contract up? Do we know? Is that also question. 2025? That's a good question. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like it is. 
I'm probably wrong. Oh, it is February of 2025. Huh. Interesting. February? Oh, so he February. could be. Imagine he just, like, appears in the Rumble. Then shows up on, like, one TNA but, taping. like, what day? Oh, you it, think? It just, says Feb it just says February 2025. Which I'm like... Really? A month after everybody else? You just gotta be so special, Josh. But from one singles match to another, we have Mike Santana versus like a guy we were just talking about, former TNA World Champion Moose. You know, Mike Santana, much like the Hardy Boys, have been a thorn at the side of the system. Moose has since lost the TNA World Championship. Santana is probably looking to become TNA World Champion at some point. They've all been kind of interconnected. But while the Hardys will be facing Myers and Eddie Edwards, Santana will be focusing on Moose. Now, like we said, we do think, you know, Moose has already lost the TNA championship. We think the Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards are going to complete the, the losing streak for the system and lose their tag titles. This Moose has already lost, though. Do you think that he could get a vict could get himself back on track and defeat Santana here? I think the whole system's got to spiral, right? They all got to break up and they all mm -hmm. got to, like... I can't believe we lost. Oh, my God. Um, Santana's another one that I expected at this point in the game to be, like, X Division Championship picture or tried to challenge for the world. And, like, none of this has happened. And I I don't know why we can't get him in a direction as well. I do think he wins here, but he needs to be turned into a more serious feud or a championship feud in 2025. So I have Santana winning. <laughs> Just because Moose and all them got to be all upset that Moose is going to turn on everybody else in the system. The thing, though, is I, I think Moose has so many more people in his corner. He also has JDC, which is formerly Dirty Dango, in his corner, who is not wrestling. Um is not wrestling on this show so he could be waiting in the wings alicia if she's cleared you know she's already going to be appearing in this tag title match in their corner they could lose and then they'll want to get and ensure that moose doesn't also lose i think that moose is going to win but i don't think it's going to be clean i think there's going to be some interference from the system whether it's myers edwards jdc aka dirty dangle or alicia um just so the system doesn't entirely lose this night um and also he's already lost his title you know so get let him get back on track a little bit though just not cleanly and it also protects santana a little bit because then you can kind of prolong this i mean the system's been attacking santana for or yeah the system's been attacking santana for weeks anyway so why not continue it you know it could go into turning point could go into the new year um and it would also keep the the feud alive because if the hardys beat the system and in in uh, abc i think the system's going to want to rematch and that would keep Santana, if Santana's still feuding with Moose, it keeps them in their corner. They could have a six man or whatever. Um, so I think I think Moose is going to win, just not cleanly. Or Santana could win via disqualification. I think there's going to be some interference here, whether it's disqualification or just Moose winning via distraction. I don't know yet, um, but I'm leaning towards the latter with Moose winning via distraction. Because um, somebody on his side distracts Santana while the referee oh. isn't looking. All right. So we've disagreed on what, two? Yeah. This is good for me. <laughs> I believe we have two We have two more matches. matches. I want to... No, I want to close out with, with that other one. So, um... We in other, you know, in other championship matchups, actually two championship match, uh, two championships on the line in a in the classic Monsters Ball match. If there's anybody who's going to compete in another Monsters Ball match, it is PCO defending his TNA Digital Media Championship and the International Heavyweight Wrestling Championship against the recently returned Matt Cardona. He, you know, he's bouncing back from injury. And going straight for a Monsters Ball match, which is kind of insane. You know, unfortunately, Steph DeLander hurt her neck. 
Um, she recently had surgery. She was expected to be more involved in this feud as they as she's been for the last few months with her being now married to PCO and but also Cardona being her tag partner. I'm I'm kind of sad that she can't really be involved in this. Maybe she might be present there, like in person, but she like just had her neck surgery, I believe. So I don't think I don't think she's going to be there, especially because this is a monsters ball match. The the risk injury risk is even higher you know i think the monsters ball match is kind of right in pco's alley um and with two championships on the line and it being spooky season i think you gotta give it to pco i agree um poor steph delander watching this yeah. match her two favorite people going at it <laughs> um i i think what you can do if you really do want to get steph involved if you know obviously with the next surgery she could just be like sitting there in the crowd and like slap one of them like she could do something as that simple as that because i know she's down in florida so if she's able to fly it's kind of like why not but yeah this is pco's match he's kind of you know adopted this match or like this type of style spooky stuff from tna hall of famer abyss so i'm gonna go with pco as well Hmm. But if, again, Cardona's also, the thing is, Cardona's been dodging a match with PCO, so, and especially with this being a monster's ball, he could bring out some crazy shit and get away with it to take down PCO, but PCO is, like, not human. Like, monster's ball is, again, right, this is not his first go around with monster's ball, and I kind of worry, though, because, again, Cardona's coming off the injury, I kind of worry, like, for his, for his also his health and all that. So I just hope that he is careful and all of that. But I do think, yeah, with the timing of the year, it being PCO's wheelhouse, I think um, PCO is going to retain both of his titles. But Cardona, Cardona, if Cardona, this, if there's any place to beat PCO though, it's in a match where basically anything, uh, anything goes. Um, so it could be, he could use that to his advantage, but I think PCO would be the right call here. And also something that is the right call is, I think, probably going to be match of the night. Mike Bailey will be defending the TNA X Division Championship against El Ijo Del Vikingo in an international. They have not wrestled each other singles wise in the couple. They've only had one singles match. It was held under GCW. So this is the first time that they're meeting in a couple of years and the first time one on one in TNA. Um, El Ijo Del Vikingo, I know, vied for the TNA uh, X Division Championship earlier this year at Hard to Kill. Um, I believe it was against Chris Saban uh, in a triple threat also involving Kushida, I think it was. He fell short, but he's back. Um, but again, From Mike, Mike Bailey, again, this reign has also not been long. Mike Bailey should not have even dropped the title to Zachary Wentz. I understand it because you want... You want Zach to head into this match with Wesley with some added leverage. I get it, you know, storyline-wise. But Mike Bailey should have never lost the X Division Championship in the first place. Um, I think this is going to be a banger of a matchup. But he just got the title match title back. So it is too soon for Mike Bailey to lose. Um, so I have him winning. But it's going to be an absolute banger. And I'm looking forward to it. This match is a chance to not only be the match of the night, but also <laughs> match of the year for yeah. TNA. Um, TNA seems to always put Bailey in that underdog spot, which is what I said before. He never gets to win the big one. He'll always get oh so close, but he'll never mm -hmm. get the job done. Um, Bailey's contract's also up at the end of the year. Mm. But so would not shock me since Vikingo free agent, he's not signed anywhere. He could go wherever he wants. But I think he will. I think Bailey will win, and then it will be announced that he is resigning with TNA. So Mike Bailey will remain your and still X Division champ. So I think this is actually pretty good. We're pretty much in agreement. You know, call your shot is hard to call the winner for um, in this because, again, nobody is confirmed at the time of recording this. There could be NXT people. We could be seeing Rhino uh, pulling a, a double duty in the... I think he will. I feel like, you know, he's wrestled recently, so why not put him in the call your shot? But also, I think the Hall of Fame ceremony is going to also be on the countdown. So yes, it he, he could cut. He could enter late. I'm hoping we see the return of Kylan King at Bound for Glory, whether it's during the call your shot or after Jordan and Masha. Um, 
I'm hoping we see her in some capacity. I could see a Javon Evans. I could see a Sol Ruka. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, Bound for Glory is obviously their biggest event of the year, and rightfully so. And it's on my birthday. I unfortunately won't be able to watch it live. Um, but I'm looking. F- I'm definitely going to be keeping up on clips throughout the night to see if we're right. Um, so of the or main- it'll just be me texting you. <laughs> that is true. I was right. You were wrong. Well, we were in agreement for most of the. We were in agreement for six of the nine m- matches. Um, seven uh, or six of the eight, if you don't want to call call your shot, because that's kind of hard to determine. Uh, pick out anyways when nobody's confirmed. Um, but we were in mostly agreeance. So if we are wrong, like it's not going to be by that much. Um, now. I will say, like, if we both go, if we're both all, if we're both wrong on all the, like, the six that we agree on, I'm going to be really sad. I'm going to get blamed. <laughs> She'll be like, it's your fault. I'm going to be like, nope, you copied no, my it, notes, it's, it's, it's not, because I said some of my answers first, so I can't, I without even knowing what you were going to say for the most part. She copied my notes. Uh-huh. We totally conspir- con- conspired. Yes. Um, in that aspect but yeah like we said don't forget to check out tna bound for glory coming up this saturday october 26th aka my birthday so you can wish me a happy birthday that day thanks um from yes, the it's from... ella's big birthday <laughs> everyone you better flood her twitter with all the happy birthday <laughs> messages on uh from detroit michigan at the wayne state Fieldhouse, kimmy before we head out of here let the people know where they can find you on social media you can find me on Twitter at Kimmy underscore Sokol. You can find me on Instagram at Kimmy dot Sokol. Um, my next appearance, which is confirmed, is the big event where I will be representing MJF. I don't know if I will live. I will probably text Ella like every hour updating her to see if MJF has done anything to me and yell at me. I might be crying. You mm-hmm. never know. So if you're in the New York area, check that out. Paul Heyman's going to be there. Fabulous Freebird's going to be there. Amanada, Sky Blue, bunch of people. So head to the big event NY.com to get your tickets for that. You could see me every Thursday on OLE Podcast where me and my wonderful co-host, Auntie Collins, is rambling all about Ring of Honor. Mostly rambling because there's really nothing to talk about for Ring of Honor because it's breaking my heart every Thursday. You could see my written work over at the Pop Break. I will have my written predictions over there, a review, and some other fun stuff. You you know, Ella, just so much fun stuff over at the Pop Break. And yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, uh, it's a tradition now at this point, just because we need you to. Im- last year, you were a lot better. Now you can be even better. Do you recall your record last year? No, I think I want to say me and Jose tied. We were going at it on Twitter, but I didn't watch the show. I was out. Mm-hmm. That's right. So we'll have to, after we're doing this, we'll have to go back to see what it was last year and see if you can improve even more this year. Yes. I <laughs> Listen, if it's improvement every Every year that means either this year or next year i'm going to be undefeated right we hope so it's really hard to call call your shot though last year was a little bit of a given it made sense for jordan to be the first woman this year though we like don't know anybody who's in it ahead of time at least as of now we're recording this on wednesday the show is in so three days no probably um, yeah so by the time this comes out because this will be coming out friday morning um you will probably already know some of the names but obviously there's also going to be a lot of surprises one of them rhino you got to pull double duty my man it's it's only right Um, i mean we said it here they've got to like maybe they'll listen to this and then (laughs) but of course you can also follow me obviously you probably already are if you're watching this but you can follow me on twitter and instagram at it's ella j all my links to my projects and podcasts including this one are all the link in my bio on those social medias kimmy Thank you so much for joining me here again. Um, I'll see you next year, but we'll we'll definitely talk before then. Well, we'll I have mean, some I, content coming out for WrestleCade. I would hope so. I Meaning we're going to be in the same state next yeah. month. Um, me and Sean are going to be in the same building. Technically, we're in the same state right now. I'm just saying. Listen, you're still six hours away. I know. <laughs> Kimmy, thank you so much. No problem.